Welcome to another episode. Today, we're diving into one of the most fundamental techniques in differential equations, the separation of variables method. But to understand why this method is so powerful, we need to go back to a heated rivalry that changed mathematics forever. In the early days of calculus, Sir Isaac Newton had his own way of writing derivatives. He used a dot notation. The first derivative was written as y with one dot above it. The second derivative had two dots above y. The third derivative had three dots above y. This looks elegant at first glance, concise, clean, mathematical. Newton even insisted on calling derivatives fluxions, the rate of flow of a quantity. But there was a problem lurking beneath this seemingly elegant system. What happens when you need the 10th derivative? You'd have to write 10 dots. Now, you might be thinking, come on, who needs a 10th derivative in real mathematics? Well, Newton thought the same thing. But then came Taylor's theorem, named after mathematician Brooke Taylor. The Taylor series allows us to approximate any continuous function using derivatives of all orders. The Taylor series looks like this. f of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times the quantity x minus a plus f bubble prime of a times the quantity x minus a squared divided by 2 factorial plus f triple prime of a times the quantity x minus cubed divided by 3 factorial, and so on. Suddenly, calculating the 50th derivative wasn't just theoretical, it was necessary. Under Newton's system, the 50th derivative would require 50 dots stacked above the y. Absolutely impractical. And if you needed the 100th derivative, forget about it. Enter Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, Newton's rival and co-inventor of calculus. When Leibniz saw Newton's notation for higher derivatives, legend has it he quipped, Newton, are you opening a mahjong parlor? What's with all these bamboo sticks? This is mathematics, not a game hall. So Leibniz proposed a revolutionary alternative, a notation that could handle any order derivative with clarity. The first derivative is dy over dx. The second derivative is d squared y over dx squared. The third derivative is d cubed y over dx cubed. And continuing this pattern, the hundredth derivative would be d to the hundredth power y over dx to the hundredth power. Suddenly, even the hundredth derivative could be written clearly. This wasn't just a cosmetic change. This new notation would unlock entirely new ways of solving differential equations. And that brings us to our main topic, the separation of variables method. Before we dive in, let's clarify what we're solving. A differential equation is simply an equation that involves a function and its derivatives. For example, dy over dx equals y relates a function to its derivative. Another example is d squared y over dx squared plus y equals zero, which relates a function to its second derivative. Solving a differential equation means finding the function y that satisfies the equation. It's like a mathematical detective story. We know how the function changes, and we need to discover what the function actually is. Let's start with arguably the simplest differential equation. The derivative of a function equals the function itself. That is, dy over dx equals y. You might recognize the solution immediately. It's the exponential function e to the x, because the exponential function is its own derivative. But let's solve this rigorously using separation of variables. Step 1. Use Leibniz notation. We have dy over dx equals y. First, we treat dy over dx not as a single symbol, but as a ratio of infinitesimals. This is the key insight. Step 2. Separate the variables. We rearrange to get dy over y equals dx. Now all the y terms are on the left, and all the x terms are on the right. The variables are separated. Step 3. Integrate both sides. We write the integral of 1 over y dy equals the integral of 1 dx. Integration is just finding the antiderivative. For 1 over y, we know the antiderivative is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of y. For 1, it's just x. So we have natural log of absolute value of y plus c sub 1 equals x plus c sub 2. 
we can combine the constants into a single constant c sub 3. So, natural log of absolute value of y equals x plus c sub 3. Step 4. Solve for y. Taking the exponential of both sides, we get absolute value of y equals e to the quantity x plus c sub 3. Using the exponential property, this becomes absolute value of y equals e to the x times e to the c sub 3. Since e to the c sub 3 is just another constant, we can call it c. Therefore, y equals c e to the x. And there we have it. The general solution is y equals c e to the x, where c can be any constant. Each value of c gives us a different solution curve. Now, you might think, that was easy. Why does this method need a special name? Well, the separation of variables is the foundation of foundations in differential equations. Many sophisticated techniques build upon this basic method. And to show you why, let's look at a much harder problem, one that stumped mathematicians for years. Let's talk about Jacob Bernoulli. He was the older brother of Johann Bernoulli. Yes, the same Bernoulli family that produced eight mathematicians across three generations. Jacob and Leibniz were friends who often met socially. At these gatherings, they discussed the latest mathematical developments. One day, Jacob encountered a differential equation that seemed impossible to solve. The equation was dy over dx equals y squared times the quantity x squared minus x. In the late 1600s, differential equation theory was in its infancy. This equation was considered nightmare-level difficulty. But Jacob Bernoulli remembered Leibniz mentioning the separation of variables method, and he thought, why not give it a try? Let's try to separate variables. First, we need to get all the y terms on one side and all the x terms on the other. Step 1. Manipulate the equation. We have dy over dx equals y squared times the quantity x squared minus x. Let's divide both sides by y squared. This gives us 1 over y squared times dy over dx equals x squared minus x. In Leibniz notation, this becomes 1 over y squared dy equals the quantity x squared minus x times dx. Wait, this looks like we've separated variables successfully. Let's try integrating. The integral of 1 over y squared dy equals the integral of the quantity x squared minus x times dx. This gives us negative 1 over y equals x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus c. But hold on, let me check if this works by substituting back into the original equation. When we take the derivative and substitute, it doesn't match. This isn't the right solution. This is where Jacob Bernoulli had his brilliant insight. Actually, let's rewrite our equation slightly to see the structure better. We have dy over dx equals y squared minus xy squared, which can be factored as dy over dx equals y squared times the quantity 1 minus x. Now divide both sides by y squared. This gives us 1 over y squared times dy over dx equals 1 minus x. Bernoulli's key insight was this, what if we make a substitution? Let's set v equals 1 over y. Then y equals 1 over v. Now, if we take the derivative of both sides using the chain rule, dy over dx equals d over dx of the quantity 1 over v, which equals d over dx of v to the negative 1, which equals negative v to the negative 2 times dv over dx, which is negative 1 over v squared times dv over dx. So, 1 over y squared times dy over dx becomes v squared times the quantity negative 1 over v squared times dv over dx, which simplifies to negative dv over dx. Substituting this into our equation, negative dv over dx equals 1 minus x. Multiplying both sides by negative 1, dv over dx equals x minus 1. Look at that, we now have a simple separable equation. We can write dv equals the quantity x minus 1 times dx. 
Now we can integrate both sides. The integral of dv equals the integral of the quantity x minus 1 times dx. The left side gives us v. The right side gives us x squared over 2 minus x plus c. So, v equals x squared over 2 minus x plus c. Remember, v equals 1 over y, so we have 1 over y equals x squared over 2 minus x plus c. Solving for y by taking the reciprocal, y equals 1 over the quantity x squared over 2 minus x plus c. We can multiply numerator and denominator by 2 to clear the fraction. y equals 2 over the quantity x squared minus 2x plus 2c. Let's rename 2c as just a for simplicity. So, y equals 2 over the quantity x squared minus 2x plus a. We can differentiate the solution and substitute back into the original equation to confirm it satisfies our differential equation. Using the quotient rule, dy over dx equals negative 2 times the quantity 2x minus 2 all over the quantity x squared minus 2x plus a squared. And it works perfectly. Jacob Bernoulli recognized that his technique could be generalized. Any differential equation of this form is now called a Bernoulli differential equation. The general form is dy over dx plus p of x times y equals q of x times y to the n, where p of x and q of x are functions of x and n is any real number except n equals 0 or n equals 1, which give linear equations. The solution method is always the same. Step 1. Divide both sides by y to the n. This gives y to the negative n times dy over dx plus p of x times y to the quantity 1 minus n equals q of x. Step 2. Make the substitution v equals y to the quantity 1 minus n. Step 3. Find dv over dx using the chain rule. This gives dv over dx equals the quantity 1 minus n times y to the negative n times dy over dx. Step 4. Substitute to get a linear equation in v. This becomes 1 over the quantity 1 minus n times dv over dx plus p of x times v equals q of x. Step 5. Solve this linear equation. Step 6. Convert back to y using y equals v to the power of 1 over the quantity 1 minus n. Let's work through a complete example. Solve the equation dy over dx plus 2xy equals xy cubed. First, identify this as a Bernoulli equation with n equals 3, p of x equals 2x, and q of x equals x. Step 1. Divide by y cubed. This gives y to the negative 3 times dy over dx plus 2x times y to the negative 2 equals x. Step 2. Substitute v equals y to the negative 2, so y to the negative 2 equals v. Then dv over dx equals negative 2 times y to the negative 3 times dy over dx. Therefore, y to the negative 3 times dy over dx equals negative 1 half times dv over dx. Step 3. Substitute into our equation. We get negative 1 half times dv over dx plus 2xv equals x. Multiply by negative 2. dv over dx minus 4xv equals negative 2x. Step 4. This is now a first-order linear equation. We can solve using an integrating factor. The integrating factor is mu of x equals e to the integral of negative 4x dx, which equals e to the negative 2x squared. Multiplying through by the integrating factor and integrating gives us v, and then we convert back to find y. Bernoulli equations appear in real-world applications. Consider population growth with limited resources. The equation is dp over dt equals rp minus kp squared. Where p is population, r is growth rate, and k represents competition for resources. This is a Bernoulli equation with n equals 2. The solution shows us the logistic growth model. Populations grow exponentially at first, then level off as resources become scarce.
This same equation models everything from bacterial growth to the spread of information on social media. Jacob Bernoulli's work on this equation, published in 1695, was groundbreaking. It showed that clever substitutions could transform seemingly impossible equations into solvable ones. This principle, transforming a difficult problem into a simpler one through substitution, became a cornerstone of mathematical problem solving. It influenced the development of linear differential equations theory, the integrating factor method, transform methods like Laplace and Fourier, and modern numerical methods. Remember, mathematics is not just about formulas and calculations. It's about the brilliant human minds who saw patterns where others saw chaos, who found simplicity within complexity.